I started sensing some things in my hotel room. God's dispatching more angels to this local church for the purpose of miracle power. I tell you something is happening in Austin, Mexico right now. I can see it right now. It's happening. This is a miracle taking place. They're from Austin, Mexico. There's a miracle happening. There's a miracle happening in Hobbs. Isn't that something? Heaven and earth will pass away, but this word will never, ever pass away. Glory to God. You know, I don't want to risk the chance of having not at least done all I know to do. I mean, we only, we, the Bible says we only know in part. But I'm going to tell you, we can know enough parts to have a whale of a life. Amen. And I don't want to not take advantage of what I know. I mean, it's going to be, it's probably going to be challenging enough to hear uh, how we missed it in some areas. But to know that you've put your hand to the plow and haven't taken time to look back, but just continue to stay forward, that's what you want to know. Amen? Because that's what he's looking for. He's looking for people that their heart's in it, all in it. Amen? I want to cover a couple of verses that we looked at last week. I'm going to try and move through several verses, but don't hold me to that. Isaiah 5.20, we talked about it uh, last week, I believe. Powerful verse. Oh, my gosh. Powerful verse. The prophet said, Woe unto them that call evil good. I mean, is there ever been a time that that's that's more uh, uh, the status quo than it is today? Call evil good good, and good, evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Thank God we don't have to do that. Thank God that we can look at things in line with God's Word, be perfectly confident in knowing that what He says is And we don't have to prove it to anybody. I said we don't have to prove it to anybody because it's written. We don't have to try and coerce them or manipulate them or browbeat them into believing. We just present it to them. Just like those of us that that have hung around here for years, we got stuck in the truth. And we realize that we don't have to perform the truth. We simply believe and walk in the truth. And whatever harvest we have coming from that, we will have that harvest, glory to God. It, it's so sad that people who once had a fire and a fervor for the things of God... And then all of a sudden, they've let a minority of people steal from them the truth of God's Word. We should never, we should never fold under the pressure of our peers or of circumstances or situations. Those things, according to the Word of God, have to line up with the Word. Now, obviously, any time it has anything to do with people's choices, just like you all know very well, personally, you're going to do exactly what you want to do. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong, you will be the one that decides what you're going to do. Even if somebody is coercing you, manipulating you, threatening you, it will still be you who decides what you're going to do. 
I don't care if they've got a pistol at your temple. You will decide whether you want to see him in a hundredth of a second or you want to bow to them for the rest of your life. Your lunch will be eaten or you'll be in his presence. You make a decision. You make a decision. But you don't actually make the decision then. You make the decision right now. You make the decision. I'm not bound. I'm not going back. I know what it looks like back there. It hadn't been that long ago. It hadn't been that long ago. Even, you know, for me, like 45 years, uh, you know, 45 years ago, uh, I, left, I left that life. But uh, I, I can still remember it. I can still remember what a waste it was, how worthless it was, how ridiculously temporary it was. Everything that you thought was going to last forever. Here we are. We've arrived. This is wonderful. She's wonderful. He's wonderful. Huh? Didn't last. You can't call evil good. And you can't call good evil. You have to call it as it really is. And the only thing that's good are those things that come from the good God who has nothing else to offer but good. Proverbs seventeen thirteen really brings it, brings it more home a little bit. Whoever rewards evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. From everything you put your hand to, if you compromise the Word of God, you're going to end up having a harvest that you don't want. I mean, you've had them before, but you don't need to have them anymore. But in order to do it, you've got to latch on to good and not allow those things that you know are going to bring some level of death into your life. Proverbs seventeen fifteen. This is a classic too. He that justifies the wicked or really calls that which is wrong okay or right. Well, you know, we can all, you know, we can all, we're just, we're just all different. We can do whatever. Well, you can do whatever you want to if you're not a child of God. But if you're a child of God, you've got different standards. You've got different standards. Whoso, again, he that justifies the wicked and he that condemns the just. We have that same thing now. There are certain justices that are, that are picked and people condemn them because their, uh, their way of believing and seeing Um, doesn't line up with how they see. And it'll always be that way. That's why you don't have to argue about it. You got people on the left, you got people on the right, you got some people in the center, and you got some people they don't know where they are. And they're all in the same boat. They're all in the same boat. The only place you and I want to be is in the truth. We want to know what God says about the issues that we have to deal with, we have to face, or that we may have to talk about. But I'm telling you, you've got to come to the place where you're not going to allow what's wrong to intimidate you. Don't be intimidated by names that you're called because you don't believe the way other people believe. I mean, it's ridiculous. Just blame the Bible. God's a big God. He actually doesn't need us to defend Him. I mean, we can do the same thing He did to the enemy because that's the enemy that you're facing now. They're trying to talk you out of what, what is true. You can say, hey, listen. It's written. 
It's written, everything and everyone reproduces after their own kind. Always has been and always will be. Going to have a baby. What's it going to be? Well, could be a who. (laughs) Could be a they. Could be a them. Might be a those. (laughs) But the fact is, none of those are possibilities. It's going to be a he or a she. That's what is going to be. That doesn't make me a gender purist. That makes me a believer in the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. And what happens when you get a little leaven going, especially in the hearts and minds of an unbeliever, is all of a sudden now we can manipulate it. We believe that's the way they're leaning. We don't want to hinder them from being what they believe they are. And so we're going to fix them. We're going to add some. We're going to remove some. I don't know about you, but it's everything I can do to keep from just saying something ugly. Because these are normally not people that uh, are without education. These are people who actually think they know something. And in their foolishness, we can see that they don't. But this is God's deal. Should we get an opportunity? I'm not going to go carry placards. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't do all that stuff. I don't do all that stuff. I wouldn't recommend anybody to do that. If we just take the stand we need to take as it, as it pertains to the purity and the cleanliness that we're walking in and that God promotes, all that other stuff take care of itself. Because until somebody's got ears to hear, they're going to hate on you. They're going to hate on you. You just drop a hint. You know, they could be in your chair at the, uh, at the salon, and they could say, you know, something goofy. And, you know, I mean, because you're not, you're not moved by their business alone. God's your provider. You know, you can say something like, you know, that's not accurate according to the Bible. That's all you got to say. Well, I thought God loved people. He does, sure enough. He loves them exactly the way He created them. And He's not deviating. The plan is still the same as it's always been. Before the child and after the child. That's why if we're going to promote plan A... We want to get our in plan A. That's right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's right. Hmm? And you've got to be in a position where when you weren't operating in plan A, you're not embarrassed to say, she's dead. He's dead. You're right, that used to me be. But no more. Uh, You know. I'm just grateful to God that he showed up in my life or I'd still be the same way I was. So we're not taking on any haughty, if it were not for the grace of God, huh? I'd still have my head in a place that it didn't belong. All of these things that are going on, the cheating, the scoundrels, all of that stuff, Murder. Deaths from we don't know what. Day after day after day after day after day. 
young men and women, boys and girls, taken out. I'm just saying, be aware of the opportunities you have to say things that line up with the Word of God when you have an opportunity. Because you never know that that one word of truth can't save a life or a family or a relationship or whatever. I mean, you're not being a martyr. You take the, take the, take the part on and say, hey, listen. Listen I, did, listen, I didn't write this book. Any goodness I have, it's because of the greater one in me. The only reason I've been able to, to, to get where I am now is because of him and his word. So I'm not looking down my bony nose at you. I'm just telling you that that doesn't line up with God's plan. And again, I've said it before, and I don't know why I've said it so much. You may have people in your family. You may have people in your family. They're not safe. I said they're not safe. And if you love them, which I'm sure you do, then you should be believing God for an opportunity to speak into their life. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed about who you were. Good Lord. Jesus wasn't embarrassed to die for you. Why should you be embarrassed? That's, a, that's stinking pride all over. I mean, he's already, he's already finished and made real your value. And you just have to choose to believe that. I mean, if you still want to wallow, wallow around in who you were and use that for an excuse and everything, well, you know, enjoy. <laughs> what a miserable, you know, it's miserable enough when you're living the life, let alone you're trying to relive it and use it for an excuse to not move forward. I'm telling you, things happen too quickly anymore. Sometimes all of a sudden something transpires and we wonder, my gosh, I just saw him. I just saw her. And now they're gone. You know, we ought to think about that a little bit. And it may not even be somebody that you know other than you've seen them. You saw them at McDonald's. You saw them and all of a sudden they're gone. I'm just saying be aware of the opportunities that you might be having to say something even though it doesn't sound like it's much. It could be just enough to get their attention. We don't know where people are. We don't know where they are. Unfortunately, we'll find out where they are when we least expect it. And all of this is done understanding God's mercy is available for anyone who will receive that mercy. So I don't care if they've been the biggest, baddest, or the most perverted, or whatever. They can turn the corner just like we did. They can turn the corner just like we did. That doesn't mean that you allow them to babysit your kids. Amen. You know, this is perfectly biblical to make this, make, make this so, um, so real to people. Come on, some of you could take, you, some of you could tell me stories that would curl my eyebrows and they're short. You know what I mean? I mean from life experiences and things that you've, you've dealt with and in the family and, and whatever. Come on. Come on, quit acting all pure. I know you're better than that. Hmm? Some of you have had to face things, I mean, and get yourself involved in stuff that, I mean, it would make me cringe, you know? 
And I was pretty nasty. But I mean, a lot of people are in a lot of positions where they have to deal and overcome with things that are a lot more heinous than the things that I perpetrated on myself. Because I don't have anybody to blame. I can remember who was in charge of everything I chose. It was me. And so, uh, you know, it's easy when all you got to do is forgive you. But, you know, when you've been abused, when you've been neglected, when you've been beaten, when you've been whatever, you've got to deal with that. You've got to realize that life doesn't have to be like that. And there are people just like you were then, now. And it's worse now than it was when you were going through what you were going through. Much worse. I'm telling you, there's a tremendous lack of God consciousness in the earth today. It's like people are walking around in a fog. Things that shouldn't make sense to anybody are making sense to people. And they're falling for it. We can't fix that. But we can do whatever we're called to do. We can live right ourselves. And then we can be sensitive to opportunities that that come across our path where we can share what God's Word says. But don't, don't try and defend God's Word. Listen, if they, if they blow you off, say, no, I'm not going to argue with you about it. I just know what He did for me. Be warmed and be filled. Get a vibe in. Whatever. Whatever. Huh? You don't have to justify the Word of God. You don't have to defend the Word of God. All you have to do is just let people know that He is your God. And for what it's worth, He's made a difference in my life. How are they going to argue with that? And you can walk away feeling fine, feeling good. You've had an opportunity to share the only answer that individual has. And you walk away enjoying that life that he's given you an opportunity to live. You don't have to be mad at him. Don't have to call him anything like I might. (laughs) You just go on and grow. Hallelujah. You know, it's like I think about giving an invitation every service, I think. You know, giving people an opportunity to get born again. Heavenly Father. Of course, if anybody shows up in this house and doesn't get born again pretty quickly, I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? So I take, I take a lot of comfort in that. Now, if there were more guests or visitors coming and you are inviting more people that need what you found, then that would be an occurrence that would transpire more. But I have to be excited by the fact that you're coming back. I'm excited that you come back. I'm excited that you're allowing God to have an opportunity to do in your life what only He can do. Some people don't ever get it as far as you've gotten it. But I'm going to tell you, none of us are finished. There's still more to get. There's still more to accomplish. There's still more for us to do. And a lot of it has to do with our willingness as individuals to take advantage of the opportunities we have. Most of you could just be busy with your family. I mean, as it pertains to making them aware of the things of God. And of course, you can't, you can't force anything on them, but you take advantage of opportunities. God's love doesn't see evil as an option. That's easy to understand if you just put a D in front of evil. Evil. 
because that's exactly why it is. Anything that he has his hands in is evil. Pure evil. All of the things now that people promote. I really dislike it when it's so focused on kids and young men and women. That's why what we've got is the only solution, and that's the Word of God. You don't finesse somebody into the kingdom. Don't do it. That's why the mandate was to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Those that believe will be saved. Those that reject will be damned. Not our fault. Not God's fault. If there's a sign there that says the bridge is out, don't drive through the sign because the bridge is out. Pretty cut and dry from the Father's perspective. He'll love you till you take your last breath. But if you're not his kid, it'll be the last time you'll be thought of. How can a loving God do that? He's God. He set the rules. And the rules are good. The Bible says in the book of Romans, the first chapter, that there'll be nobody with an excuse for even creation declares his presence. They don't have to hear a powerful sermon. He believed there's been enough been done just by the creation around people. And of course, in a nation like ours where everybody thinks they're born again or they're a Christian, everybody thinks they're good. I guess we didn't preach enough of what the Bible really says about where people are. Didn't the Bible say that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? So everybody has an opportunity because Jesus fixed that issue. But they have to make that decision personally. I'm just thinking about kids and young people a lot right now. Thinking about kids and young people a lot. It's pretty tough on kids. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty tough on kids. It's not pretty tough. It's real tough. You know the thing about kids? They love their parents. Whether they're together or separate, they love their parents. I mean, they really love their parents. They're torn by the situation. And it makes them vulnerable to things that they should have never been vulnerable to. And we don't feel better because we were vulnerable when we were little. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for those of us that can be examples to be examples. Because the cycle doesn't have to continue. Didn't continue in my life. Didn't continue in PK's life. And it hasn't continued in most of your lives. And that's the goal. That's the goal. How many of you in here have children under the age of 10? That's a bunch. That's a bunch. Some of you have got them spread out like it was, you know, two or three families. <laughs> You're what, sweetheart? You're pregnant. <laughs> I 
that happens in some families, you know. All of a sudden, the next one to the three-year-old is uh, 16. <laughs> wow. You've got you've to do something really good then, and that's rejoice. Just rejoice and tell yourself how much you missed potty training. <laughs> I remember when PK potty trained the girls. PK, she's, of course, she's, a, she's regimented. I mean, she's got a book. She's got a plan. Huh? She'd sit there. How long did it take you to, was, was Charity fairly quick? Which one was pretty fast? Charity or Faith? Neither one of them. <laughs> what, was it two days or how long did it take? I mean, I know that she'd, you know, I'd hear her in there, yay, poo-poo, yay, poo-poo. <laughs> yay, pee-pee, yay, pee-pee. <laughs> I don't think I ever told you, I really appreciate you doing that. I don't remember having a lot to do with that. Did I help in that process at all? No. <laughs> well, that's when you had your office at the house, so you were right there handy to do that. I couldn't come home. I was at work. I couldn't, I couldn't come home when, you know, you felt like it was time, so. I understand some people just wait till they learn on their own. Don't be pointing at anybody around you now. That's so rude. You know, that's not fair to the children's church workers <laughs> at all. You know, when they're six and they need you to wipe their drawers, you know. Not happening. Come here and get Billy. <laughs> Praise God.